Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about what I read in October. This month I read four books and that might seem like a low number but I managed to read two books that were over 600 pages each and they were both high fantasy books so I think I had a pretty good reading month. Before I get into the book reviews, I do want to let you know that I did post three full in-depth book reviews for new releases that came out in October slash September. For those books, I will be more brief in my thoughts in this video and if you do want a more in-depth review video, please check out the links in the description box below for the full length reviews. So let's just get to the first book that I read. First up, I finished The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. This is book one in the Threads of Power series and it is like a spin-off continuation series from the Shades of Magic trilogy. I rated this one a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it so much and it was so nice to see our old characters along with the new cast of characters that we meet. This book series takes place through parallel worlds that are connected by the city of London. There are magicians known as Antari who can hop in between these Londons. From the Shades of Magic trilogy, we do have our own cast of characters. We're following Kel, Lila, Rai, and Alucard from that old series into this new one, but we also have two new characters. The first one being Kosika, who is a young queen in White London. And then we have Tessaly, who is a teenager in Red London, and she has a very rare magical ability. This book is set seven years after the events of the last book in the Shades trilogy. It is really fluid in the way that they interconnect with each other. Seeing the old characters was an absolute delight for me, and it was really fun to learn what they were up to. But the new characters really stole the show for me. It's really fun to learn about their different backgrounds and to see how they got to where they are in present day. Before you dive into this one, I do highly recommend you to read the original trilogy and I'm very excited to see what happens next. Then I finished up a thriller and that was The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This is the type of thriller that really captures your attention from the start all the way to the end. The concept of a woman not speaking after brutally murdering her husband is very intriguing. This woman is Alicia and she is currently staying at a forensic unit in London. And this is where Theo comes in who is a criminal psychotherapist and he is really determined to understand why Alicia is silent. Theo also has problems of his own that becomes more prominent throughout the book and that really adds a lot of intensity to his story. This book really took me on a wild ride because I had no idea why Alicia was quiet and decided to stay quiet and also why Theo was so determined to get down to why she wasn't speaking. There is a huge twist at the end that was really well crafted and it really did shock me when I got to that point. I would recommend you to dive straight into this book without looking at any other reviews because that might spoil you, but this thriller was very very well done. Then I picked up the new Cassandra Clare book which was Swordcatcher. I ended up rating this a 4 out of 5 stars and this is the first book in her new adult fantasy series and that's not part of the Shadowhunters world. But you can tell it is the same author of Cassie Clare having her style of writing, making a new story. We're set in the kingdom of Klesselin and this kingdom, the nobles and citizens alike, they are in the pursuit of power and wealth. In this one, we have two main protagonists, the first one being Kel, who is the body double for Prince Connor, also known as the sword catcher, and he's struggling to see his own path in life. Then we have Lynn, who is an Ashkari, and she is also a physician, and she's capable of magic. But Lynn is very determined to find a cure for her dying best friend, Miriam. And these two collide when there is a failed assassination attempt. I really enjoyed this new world with its intense politicking and magical war. The characters are multifaceted. Although the world building was a slow burn to understand what was happening, it was really richly built and I couldn't help but be immersed. I did like we still had the style of Cassie Clare's writing but it took on a more mature tone. 
I think if you're a fan of the Shadowhunters series that you will really highly enjoy this one. Then the last read for October was A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Gerber. This is book three and the final book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy and I ended up reading this one a three and a half stars out of five. In this finale we see how Evangeline and Jax are navigating the magnificent north and they are dealing with many enemies at every corner. There's a new curse that needs to be broken and we're wondering if a true love will win in the end. This book did end up wrapping up everything and all the loose ends, although there was a major plot point from book two that took center stage in this book and I felt like it took too much page time and it did make the reading experience a little bit clunky. One thing for sure is I wanted more of Jax and Evangeline and less of the villain character. However, I like seeing Evangeline acknowledge how she has grown, Jax being overprotective of Evangeline and how these two collided together in their romance. The writing in this one is still keeping in line of what Stephanie Garber is known for as being really whimsical and atmospheric, but it did fall flat at time, but the characters really did pull through for this one. The ending was very satisfying and I do hope we get to see more of Jackson and Evangeline in the future. And if you're looking for a young adult fantasy romance, I would recommend you to pick up this series. Those were the four books I read in October and I hope you enjoyed watching my brief thoughts on most of them. If you're wanting for more full in-depth thoughts of some of these books, that would be the new releases including Swordcatcher, a Curse for True Love, and The Fragile Threads of Power, those will be linked down below. I hope you all had a great day and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any future uploads, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!